the mass, three kilograms, is compressed against the spring of constant 300 Newton per meter. So block is held to the spring, compressed, uh, an amount of 60 centimeters. So it's kind of a, like a big spring, so you can compress it by uh, 0.6 meters, and then you, you let go. Assume the surface has a coefficient of connect, kinetic friction of 0.2. What is the velocity of the block when the spring reaches equilibrium? So you let go of the spring, and the block moves forward. What's the velocity that the block reaches? How far does the block travel along the surface before coming to rest? And then the final question, how much energy is lost to heat energy due to the surface friction of the table, right? So a very, very good problem again, okay? So let's uh, visualize this here. You are compressing this. And then this is the equilibrium position. The distance that you are compressing is 60 centimeter, which is 0 0.60 meter. And then uh, the spring is uncoiling, uncoiling. By the time the block gets here, what's the final velocity of the block? Then the spring lets go of the block. And then the block goes, goes a certain distance until the final velocity of the block is zero. So after the spring lets go of the block, the final velocity of the block that the spring gave the block becomes the initial velocity of the second stage, right? The, that initial velocity gives it some forward motion, but then friction eventually makes it stop, right? So what are the equations of motion that we're going to use here, okay? So uh, the basic equation here that we are using is this one. Work of friction is equal to the change in potential energy plus change in kinetic energy of a system, right? If there is no friction in the surface, then the work of friction is zero. That means the change of potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy is zero, which basically essentially means the total energy of the system doesn't change, right? The total energy of the system is the sum of potential and kinetic, right? So if the work of friction is zero, then there's no change in potential and kinetic energy, okay? But in this case, there is a work of friction, right? The work of friction uh, along, uh, from here to here, the friction is this way, facing this, mu kn. What's the distance that the object is going? The distance is d, right? So what's the work of friction? The distance it's moving is forward, friction is back, friction is doing negative work. It's opposed to the distance, right? So the work of friction is negative mu k n, that's the force of friction. Then you multiply that by the distance d that the object went, and then that gives you the work of friction, and it's always negative. That's equal to the potential final, uh, poten let's call it potential energy final, plus potential energy initial, <coughs> plus... Uh, I should say here, uh, sorry, uh, minus. Uh, change in potential energy, I should say potential energy final minus potential energy initial, okay? Because that's the change of potential energy. Then you add to that, okay? You add to that the kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial, okay? So let's first do the first stage. Uh, mu k is given to us in the problem, right? Mu k was uh, 0.2. What's the normal force, okay? Well, since the block is on a horizontal uh, surface, the normal force is just equal to its weight, right? And and mg cancels. So what is its uh, weight? Well, it was given to us that the mass is 3 kilogram, right? So if the mass is 3 kilogram, the weight uh, must be 3 times 9.8. So the normal force is just simply equal to its weight. What's the distance? The distance is 0.6 meters from 
the compressed position to the equilibrium, right? 0.6 meters. That must be equal to what? What's the potential energy final that it has over here when it's in equilibrium? Well, when it's equi equilibrium, it's no longer in contact with the spring. There's no stored potential energy at spring. And it's not like it's going uphill or downhill, so it has no change of gravitational potential energy. So the potential energy final is zero, right? Minus the potential energy initial. What's the potential energy initial? Does it have potential energy initial? Yes. When you compress a sp uh, the spring, you store potential energy in the spring. It's called elastic potential energy. What is the potential energy of a spring? Potential energy of a spring is half kx squared. Half times its spring constant times the amount that you compress it squared. And this gives you in units of joules. So we're going to do minus the initial potential energy, one half. What was its k? Its k value was 300. What was the x? Well, the x is the amount that you compressed it. It's not only the amount that the block went, but it's the amount that you compressed the spring, right? So that's uh, 0.6 squared. So now I add kinetic energy final. What is the kinetic energy final? Yeah, it does have kinetic energy final here. This is this one here. So what's the equation for kinetic energy? Well, we already know it's half mv squared, right? So one half times its mass. What was its mass? Three kilograms times v final squared. <clears throat> now, what's kinetic energy initial? That one is zero because when I compress it, it's, it starts at rest. So this is zero. This one is zero, and this one is zero. So now I have, I'm trying to solve for V final. Well, the rest of it is just calculation. This one goes over here, becomes plot positive, right? So you have, uh, becomes 150 times 0.6 squared minus this thing, 0.2 times 3 times 9.8 times 0.6, and then this one stays on the right side, which is one and a half V final squared. One and a half V final squared. So then you calculate this 150, 150 times 0.6 squared minus <clears throat> 0.2 times 3, that's going to give you 0.6 times 9.8 times 0.6. And then you divide that by 1.5. So, so far I've got this. 50.472 is equal to 1.5 V final squared. So you divide that by 1.5. And, and then square root it. You get 5.8. So the final velocity when the spring uncoils is 5.8 meters per second. Now, what would have happened if there was no friction? If there was no friction, none of this would have uh, been here, right? None of this would have been here, right? So let me cross this off. Then what would the final velocity be? Well, now it's much, much simpler. 150 times 0.6 divided by 1.5 equals the final square. Okay, well, actually, this one is going to give you uh, a bigger answer, right? 150 divided by 1.5 times 0.6 squared. This gives you 36 right here, right? So what's the final? 6. So it's kind of nice to see what would have happened if there was no friction compared to what's happening now. So friction is reducing the velocity by 0.2 meters per second. Instead of going at 6, it's going at 5.8. OK, now, how long is it going to go before it stops? Now, I could use this number already. Let's go back to this, 
right? <coughs> so we're going to use the same equation here. Okay. So how far is it going to go? Well, this one stays the same, point two n. The distance we don't know, right? The distance we don't know now. So we can say d, right? Then what we can do is this. Potential energy final when it's here is zero, OK? Potential energy initial when it was here, right? Still zero. Kinetic energy final when it's here is zero. What's left over? Kinetic energy initial when it was here. Remember, the final velocity became the initial velocity, right? So the kinetic energy initial is the energy that it had when the spring let go of it, right? So uh, the only thing that you have is this one. So you're going to have 0.239.8 d minus 1 half 300. Oh, let's see here. This one I'm going to erase. So you have here minus, what's the kinetic energy initial? 1 half uh, times the mass times the initial velocity, which was the 5.8, right? Uh, so that's 5.8 squared. So this minus cancels this minus. You see the negative and the negative there. And I'm going to solve for d. Well, d is just simply going to equal, this is 1 and a half over the 0.2 times 3 is 0.6 times 9.8. So let's see what we get here. Eight point five eight. <coughs> let's see here. Um, yeah, that is the answer. Uh, eight point five eight two. So the distance is 8.582 meters, that's how far it's going to go. That's quite a distance before it finally stops. It succumbs to friction, right? So now the final answer was, what's the overall net energy that it has lost to friction? How much energy went to heat? Well, that is equal to the absolute value of all the work done by friction. Remember, friction is doing negative work. That work shows up as what? It shows up as heat that is lost to the surroundings. It shows up as heat that is lost to the block. The block also warms up. The surface also warms up. So let's add up all the work that friction has done. Okay. So work of friction is equal to negative mu k n d total. And then let's just take the absolute value of that. Okay? And that work shows up as heat, right? So you have uh, 0.3, uh, the coefficient of friction, no, sorry, the coefficient of friction was 0.2, right? And then what was the normal force? 3 times 9.8. Now, what's the total distance that the block went? Well, it went a distance of 8.582 from the end of the block, right, from the end over here. And then it went an extra 0.6 here from the, when the spring was uh, compressed. So it went, uh, uh, that distance 8.582 is measured from the equilibrium position of the spring, right? So I have to add those distances plus 0.6. So add that. <clears throat> multiply it by 0.2, multiply it by 3, multiply it by 9.8, and you get 53.988. So 53.99. 53.988 joules. We can say 53.99 joules. So close to 54 joules of heat is lost, and it uh, goes to heat uh, energy. Okay, so now you can see a good problem here with work and energy. Thank you.